today I'm going to show you guys how to decompile Xamarin apps simply by downloading either the APK or IPA file for them. So from my past experience, it, this has worked best by using the Android version of the Xamarin app simply because it's easier to get to an .dll assembly that's easy to be decompiled. So I've had some issues where the program I'm going to use, ILSpy, has struggled to decompile some of the assemblies for the iOS versions of apps. So I'm just going to show you how it works on Android today. So the first thing we need to do is actually find an app we can use. So the best way to do this is actually to see uh, what companies are using Xamarin to develop their apps. So one of the ones I found was Cinemark and uh, Fox Sports. So I think we'll probably just go with the first two. So in order to download an APK for us to decompile, we need to use a program called Raccoon. So Raccoon is just basically a Java front end for the Google Play Store that allows us to download APK files for specific apps. So I'm going to go ahead and run this from the command line. Let's go ahead and start it up. And um, I recommend creating a separate Google account just for this because there's a risk that Google may uh, ban this virtual device for some reason. So according to Raccoon's documentation, it's recommended to use a separate Google account that's separate from your you know, main account that you use on all your phones. So I've uh, pulled up the Cinemark app. I'm going to go ahead and download and it's going to go ahead and start downloading the APK. This is all direct through Google Play. There's no middleman in between. So this ensures that we're getting the correct and latest copy of the app. Once it's complete, we're going to go ahead and hit show files. And now we have the APK. It's uh, inside a folder from the user directory. So let's make a new folder on the start. Let's call it Cinemark. Cinemark app. So let's go ahead and copy this to there. And then go ahead and make one for Fox Sports too. So let's close out of that. Look for Fox Sports. And make sure that's the same app. Fox Sports Mobile. Looks like the right one. We're going to go ahead and click on it. Hit download. Start downloading. So basically what we're going to do after we finished obtaining the APKs is we're going to go ahead and unzip them because APKs are basically just archived files. And we're going to get the .NET assemblies from them and we can just put those into ILSpy and ILSpy will be able to spit out the decompiled code. So we have this Fox Sports app now. Go ahead and paste it in there. Let's close those two. So now I think we're good with ILSpy. Go ahead and close that. So now I'm going to go ahead and cd into the Cinemark app. I'm going to go ahead and change the name of this file to something easy like cinemark.apk. I'm going to need to put this into the command line. So zip.apk and it's going to extract 
extract everything from there. Now I'm going to go ahead and rename this as well. CD into this directory and the foxports.apk. And this will just again extract everything we need from here. So the main thing we're actually looking for is the .NET assembly. So I'm just going to create a new folder called DLLs. So we can put the DLLs in. So we're going to want to copy what looks like this DLL. Sorry, I didn't need to open that. Copy that. Com.synmark mobile. DLL configs. Yeah, that looks like the only one we need. We need to look mainly for the DLLs that correlate to the bundle identifier for the app. Those are the, usually the ones we need to extract. So once we've done that, we can start looking for the one for Fox Sports. Dot mobile and dot droid. So we're gonna go. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy both of these. Bundle identifier is a little bit different for this one because it doesn't include the com dot in front of it. So you're just really gonna have to look through any DLL that contains the name of the app is usually the one that we're gonna want to extract. So uh, looks like we're done there. So Isle Spy is actually only available on Windows. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this deal folder to a flash drive. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that flash drive in my Windows computer. So give me just one second. Drive's in the other computer now. I'm going to go ahead and connect to it over remote desktop. And as you can see, I already have Isle Spy open on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that folder from my USB drive. Go ahead and open up the DLLs. So, my DLLs folder. Let's open up that Cinemark app first. Hit open. We're going to go ahead and expand this. And as you can see, we have the decompiled methods, variables, everything for each class, namespace, everything. So this looks like to be the um, the form solution because there's another one that ends in dot droid. So this is all the Android specific stuff. As you can see, you can see exactly what type of objects they're using, how they're building their views, etc. So that was the Cinemark app. We're going to go ahead and open this Fox Sports app. So um, we have some constants, some support URLs. Promos are empty. Some ads, ad unit IDs some services, looks like some local stuff, um, all the views, so 
there's just the interface for the views. Let's open that dot droid solution. And then we're going to get into some more Android specific stuff in regards to app keys, insight keys, hockey app IDs, all sorts of stuff that they really should be obfuscating. Most of this wouldn't be possible if you used a good .NET obfuscator. Um, Preemptive Solutions actually offers one that claims support for Xamarin as well, so I'd recommend if your company is large as Fox Media Group, you use something like that because this is simply surprising. I mean, I actually tried doing the um, Cinemark decompile before I did this video, and this was the first time I actually tried doing it with the Fox Sports app, and uh, I didn't realize I was going to get you know, this level of, uh, of decompilation in regards to getting, you know, identifiers, keys, whatnot, so. Anyways, that's, uh, that's basically how you do it. So this will basically work with any Xamarin app, whether it be Xamarin Native or Xamarin Forms. Preferably, I'd recommend trying to decompile the Android version simply because I've had better luck decompiling the assemblies generated for Android in regards to letting IELSPY decompile them back to some native C sharp code. So uh, that's basically it. Thanks for watching. Uh, links to my blog will be in the video description below if you'd like to read more information.